Today in our 2012 Ram 1500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Firestone Coil to Air Spring Conversion Kit for the rear axle, part number F2595. To begin your installation, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get measurements on the back and the front for normal ride heights. Now we've gone ahead and done that, and you can see here we've added approximately a thousand pounds, and what it's done to the back end of the vehicle is it's dropped it three inches. It's also raised the front end about a quarter of an inch. What that's going to do is it's going to add unnecessary wear and tear on the tires and pressure on the suspension. The front of the vehicle is going to affect your steering and handling and overall affect your braking. So now with our load back in our truck, our airbags installed, we were able to get not quite the normal ride height or the factory ride height, but we are within a half inch to level with the front end. These airbags are going to take a lot of stress off of your factory suspension. These airbags are gonna be a full replacement of your factory springs. First thing you wanna do is remove the tires, which we have gone ahead and done. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna get some jack stand. You wanna make sure that the jack stands can withstand the weight of the axle. Go ahead and put them in place. Next thing we need to do, we're gonna take out this lower bolt on our shock. We're gonna be using two 13 16 wrenches. Now if your bolt is a little bit hard to get out. If you just raise the axle just enough to take the pressure off of that, that bolt will slide right out. And then you're gonna repeat that same thing on the other side. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna slowly lower our axle to loosen our spring so we can get it out. And we're gonna do this evenly on both sides. Then we're just gonna push our spring out and you're gonna also remove this rubber cup here. Next thing we need to do is we're gonna need to remove our wheel well liner. We're gonna have 11 bolts. You're gonna have nine that run across the inside of the fender here. And you're gonna have two more that are inside. And you'll just slowly go around and start pulling it out. And then you're gonna repeat that same thing on the other side. Next, you're gonna have four double-sided bolts. You're gonna take two of them and they're gonna thread into one side of the bag. When you tighten these down, you just wanna tighten them down until they stop. You don't have to put any extra on them. Next, we're gonna have our valve. It's gonna go into one side of our bag here. Thread it in like that. And we're gonna take a 12 millimeter wrench. We wanna tighten it up. Just like that. Until it seats. Next, we'll take our plate. And you'll see one side is indented, the other side is flat. You're gonna take the flat side and put it down on top of the bag that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our bag. You see there's going to be a threaded spot in the bottom of the bag, this uh, aluminum casing here. There's a hole right on top of this cup and this is sitting on top of the axle. You want to line these two up. One thing I do suggest doing is taking your bolt and feeding it through this hole down here on the bottom uh, just to make sure it goes in and out. And we're going to line those two up. So next, in your kit, you're going to get a plate like this. And this top mount where your spring was, this plate is going to slide in on top of it. And it's going to go right inside this hole, or just above the hole. So now our two double-sided bolts here are actually going to go up inside of this hole through the two holes in that plate. Now we're gonna do that is you're just gonna grab your bag and raise it up like this. And line up our two holes and you're gonna have two flange nuts and we just wanna hand tighten those for now. But you wanna make sure before you tighten those all the way down that this bag is not twisted in any way. Once you get to where you need it, 
you know it's not twisted, we'll take a 14 millimeter wrench and we'll tighten down our nuts on the top for a bracket. Next thing we're gonna do is reinstall our shock. And we can adjust the height with our stand so that we can just take our bolt and slide it into place. Once you have that back in place, you'll repeat the same process on the other side. Next, we're gonna take an airline tube cutter. You wanna make sure you don't use uh, any type of pliers to do this because it'll pinch the line or flatten it out. So we're gonna be using part number F9009. And we're just gonna make sure we have a good flat end on it. I'm gonna take that in, and I'm gonna push it right up into that valve. I'm gonna take my other end, and there's a hole right on the top of this plate. I'm gonna feed it up through the hole. So what I did is I just ran my iron tube across the outside of the frame here, staying away from anything moving or hot, zip tying along the way, and I'm not zip tying so tight that it pinches the line. I just want it held in place. I went right across the front of the bumper beam here, and I did the same thing on the passenger side. Met them both right here toward the back of the vehicle on the passenger side. I just rolled up my extra line and zip tied it up out of the way. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our inflator valves on this little plastic bracket here. We're gonna remove this white cap. Then we're gonna remove this nut. The kit's gonna come with washers. You're gonna put one flat washer on. You're gonna put the valve through. Follow it with another washer. And then you're gonna reinstall the nut. We'll take a 13 millimeter wrench, tighten it up along with a pair of channel locks or another wrench, vice grips, whatever. We're not gonna tighten it. We don't wanna tighten it too tight because you don't wanna crack this. Next, we're gonna find a place to mount this. Normally it's on the hitch. If you don't have a hitch, you can mount the valves up here on the bumper. Now your kit's gonna come with two large zip ties. They come in the pack with this. That's what you'll use to install it. And again, you can use your channel locks or a pair of pliers even. Let's see if I can't get them just a little bit tighter. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you have the right tube going to the right bag so you know which side goes to what. I'm just gonna line them up like this. You wanna make sure you're not pulling on it tight because it will pinch. Leave myself a little extra. Take my airline tube cutter. We'll feed that right into our valve, just like that. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Once you have all that done, you can remove your stands. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put air in our bags. And we're gonna check all of our connection points where our airline tube goes in to make sure we don't have any air leaks. Next, we're gonna take some soapy water a spray. And what you're looking for is you're looking for big bubbles. If you have big bubbles, then you have a leak. Once you've determined you don't have any leaks, you can reinstall your wheel well liners and your tires. Now with our truck empty, 
and our airbags installed, we're gonna go ahead and add enough air to get us back up to normal ride heights. And that'll do it for the look at and installation on the Firestone Coil to Air Spring Conversion Kit for the rear axle, part number F2595 on our 2012 Ram 1500.